As an astronaut, uh, the Hubble Space Telescope mission is kind of the holy grail of being able to go up and do something that is widely regarded as extremely important. Uh, my first involvement with the Hubble Space Telescope was a very, very minor role on the first servicing mission, and that just whetted my appetite uh, for what might happen in the future. That was the first year I was an astronaut, in fact. And so after my second mission in 1997, I was asked would I start uh, practicing some of the tasks for a future Hubble mission, just engineering. And I thought, wow, maybe there's a small chance I would get to go to Hubble. Uh, in the end, I've been to Hubble three times, 1999, 2002, and 2009. When I first became an astronaut, I was asked to help out a little bit on the first Hubble servicing mission. And as an astronomer, I found working with Hubble uh, to be just an amazing activity, working with the astronauts who actually went up. But I was a brand new astronaut, and it whetted my appetite that there was some chance I might someday be able to go up to the Hubble Space Telescope myself. Well, after my second mission in 1997, I was asked to go into the spacesuit underwater and help do engineering for a future Hubble mission, uh, and subsequently was asked to go to the mission. And I did fly that in 1999. And I thought, you know, this is the holy grail of, of being an astronaut. And in fact, not only that mission, but I've flown three Hubble missions. On each of the Hubble service missions I've been on, the, the three missions, there have been some tasks that we think these are going to be very easy, and then some tasks that we know will be very difficult. And on my very first mission, we had to replace a radio transmitter that was not designed to be changed. And so we thought, okay, this is going to be the hard bit. And in fact, it was a very hard bit. We found out that uh, some of the screws by which this was installed into the telescope had actually been glued in. And so where I thought I'd just be able to unscrew it like this, I actually had to grab this little screwdriver, you know, and with all of my strength, unscrew the screws. But I found that I really enjoyed these difficult tasks. So on the, each of the subsequent missions, I sort of volunteered for doing the hard bits. I think the, uh, the crowning achievement of uh, all of our missions has been on this mission in t uh, 2009, where we did brain surgery on the STIS instrument and on the advanced camera for surveys, removing tiny screws and pulling circuit boards. Now this was technically the hardest, but I think also the most rewarding. When we send a crew, and when I go up to the Hubble Space Telescope uh, with the teams that I've led, there's always been rule number one. Rule number one is don't break the telescope. You know, we're in big bulky spacesuits, and after all, it's a delicate scientific instrument. So when the first images come down, you know, it's, it's beautiful, you know, to see some star that has, you know, in the act of exploding, or a beautiful galaxy interacting with another galaxy, and the science is very deep and meaningful. But to those of us who have been up there working on the telescope, it means that we didn't break rule number one, that the telescope really works, and there's a tremendous amount of satisfaction in that. There are so many discoveries that Hubble has made, some that we knew we would make, you know, such as measuring the, ex the speed of the expansion of the universe, uh, verifying the existence of black holes, and then there are some that were completely unexpected. Uh, in fact, uh, my favorite, I think, is one that when Hubble was launched, we didn't know about any extrasolar planets. In fact, there were nine planets in our solar system, uh, then demoted to eight. So my favorite Hubble discovery, if you will, is the measurement of the atmosphere of a planet around a nearby star that was made by the STIS instrument. I think it's uh, really, you know, boggles the mind or stimulates the imagination to think, you know, that here on Earth, with a telescope in orbit, we can actually spy on other planets and other solar systems.